happy Friday, everybody. Friday's here once again, as usual. It has snuck up on us faster than ever. Every week seems to go faster and faster. I think we're just all in a rush to get to Christmas. Maybe that's just me. I am once again working on my Prairie Schooler Woodland Santas. Made that promise to myself that it would not come off the frame until this particular one is finished. And I have now completed two of the four patterns. I've done one with the pheasants. Now I'm working on the one with the reindeer. And I'm trying to decide which one will be next. I think I'll probably do the one with the wolf or dog. Is that supposed to be a wolf or a dog? What do you think? I prefer to think it's a wolf since it's the woodland Santas. And then at the very top of my vertical piece, I'll have Santa in his sleigh. I think this is the one that should be at the top. That's the plan anyway. We'll see. Again, this is booklet 96. Prairie Schooler, Woodland Santas. One of my favorites. Feels festive around here. So, oh yeah, that reminds me. Speaking of Santa and his toy sack, there is a toy horn hanging from his bag in the design that I'm working on right now. This is charted for 3371, which is the same color as the sack. I have decided to swap out 3371 for a gold color because I think it's a horn, it's an instrument, it should be it should be gold. And I just so happened to get a couple of different golds in the Christmas Victorian Christmas box that I just got from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. So I was looking at the two golds that came in the set and I think I'm gonna go with the antique gold over the Victoriana gold because I think this one, it's lovely and bright, but I think it's a little too bright for Prairie Schooler. And that's just my opinion. So I think if I go with the antique gold, it's gonna blend in a little bit better. It's a little more in the same color family as the browns and the the 3777 is the red that's used in Santa's coat. So anyways, that's what I'm going to go with. So I will I'm going to open this up. With scissors. I like the way that she prepares her floss. Ties it together at the top. And then these are through the hole like that. So these are already cut. They're all cut, but they are, what are these? These are probably, that's about 18 inches. So these are 36 inch lengths, I think. And I like stitching with about 18 inches. So, I actually, I did this with my blue threads from the summer kit that I'm using to stitch Gerald's design. And I just snipped them all right at the beginning, right in the middle, so that they're all already cut to the length that I like to use for stitching. I'm gonna take out the one that I need. And then all the other ones are going to go back. Now these are 20 yard skeins. These are, this is plump. This is a lot of floss for the price. I think it is a really terrific value. And then I'm just gonna sort this back out because there's so much floss, it's actually a little thick to be doing this but that way I keep it on the tag and I keep it with the, with the label and the name and I know what it is. So 
I will also, because I'm stitching with two threads, I can't double them over like I've been doing with the DMC, but that's okay. I'm gonna take that extra and I'm just gonna keep it to the side now until I know for sure that I won't need any more. So I'm gonna thread up a third needle. This is, this is a bit of chaos here for me. I never stitch usually with more than one needle threaded at a time, but I thought I would give it a try today and see if whether having a plan in place before I started the stitch, I keep a needle minder with extra uh, needles on it on my, right on top of my frame there. Pretty handy. I had a really nice comment from Keepsake Stitches last week. I had made a comment about how I'd been told that a good rule of thumb was to change your needle every project. And she said that uh, as a shop owner and a designer, that wasn't something that she ascribed to and that uh, she thought that was A-OK -okay, that I wasn't changing my needle every project. Thank heavens because whew, don't want to be breaking any rules here. I am using, I had mentioned last week, I would show you this week and I remembered, look at that, I remembered. This is Bees Wax Bliss. This was a little uh, gift from Polly last year around, right around this time, just before Christmas time. And I love it, the scent of it is so nice. Just love it. So let's thread this in the back and then let's see how we can do with our three colors that are ready to go. Just up. That's the little foot of the toy doll that's sitting out of his gift bag there. Santa sack. wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who wished my husband and I a happy anniversary last weekend. It was incredibly kind of you and we had a lovely evening. It was really really fun. 20, 22 years has just gone amazingly fast but It's been, it's been a great ride so far. Looking forward to the next 22. Midwest Stitchers Retreat is on this weekend. I've been uh, coming across photos on Instagram and Facebook, and everybody looks like they are having the time of their life. I believe Miss Letitia, Crafty Curator, is also at a retreat this week, either to just today or the whole weekend, I'm not exactly sure, but you lucky ducks. However, I can't be too jealous. I have my very own little retreat coming up in a few weeks where I get together with a few of my Southwestern Ontario stitcher friends and we will be stitching the weekend away in just a few short weeks. So I'm trying really hard not to be overly jealous and just feel happy for those instead who are visiting together. Oh, that is really nice. I'm happy, I'm so happy that I chose a different color. That looks like a musical instrument to me. That's just the right color. My parents were here overnight. We had a 
sadly, a memorial service to go to last night for my cousin. And so my parents were here and they spent the night and it was a short, short time spent with them. But at the memorial service, it was, uh, um, there were family members there who I hadn't seen in many years. It was nice to reconnect, though it was for a sad reason. It was nice to be reminded that family surrounds you and they're always there no matter what. So my parents were up and off early this morning because uh, they are well aware of how much work I've got to get through in the next couple of weeks. And so they, we had a quick visit and then they were back in the car and back on their way home. And we're planning our next visit to see them some point in November. My mom had brought a delicious soup yesterday. It was a leek and sausage. I believe there might have been potatoes in there too, but I was I was mostly concentrating on the sausage. I'll be honest, it was delicious. So we had that for lunch. My brother was there as well. My brother came down. It was nice to see him as well. Doesn't that look like a proper horn? As you can see, I finally got the reins, at least the top part of the reins, connected to Santa, even though poor Santa still doesn't have a head. We're getting there. I'm trying to enjoy the journey with this piece, which is good since we're going on year three with this piece, but that's okay. It's all good. I've been watching some Netflix lately. We just started the third season of Better Call Saul, which is it's one of those shows that kind of keeps me on the edge of my seat. But that's been enjoyable. Also, I just finished an audiobook. Jeffrey Archer, the uh, Clifton Chronicles. It was the first book in the Clifton Chronicles. It's a series. I believe there are five books in the series. The first one is called Only Time Will Tell. And it is the story of... It's based on a man named Harry, Harry Clifton, and sort of the arc of his his family story. And yeah, it was quite enjoyable. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a big didn't it didn't ask, it's one of those stories that doesn't ask a lot of you other than providing entertainment. And when I'm doing a lot of sewing, I, I love to have a book in my ears and it makes, it just makes the time pass. I'm already doing something I enjoy because I love sewing, 
but then you know you add an audiobook on top of that and you feel like you're both multitasking so you're getting lots done and i and you feel also that you know you get the pleasure of being able to read a book while still accomplishing something else because i really miss reading i i used to read a lot i was the kind of child who you know my mother would tell me to go and take a bath in the evening and she'd find me an hour later still on my bed reading a book and my kids don't seem to have inherited that absolute you know let's shut out the world and get lost with my nose stuck in a book but my niece Clara definitely has and my brother was very similar to me. My brother also, and still to this day, my brother is a voracious reader. And, you know, when I started crafting, knitting and, and stitching and sewing, and that sort of took over all of my, I mean, all of my free time. You know, reading just sort of, and I, I miss it. I really, really miss it. So adding audiobooks into my life has been a, just such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. So we, we have an Audible account. My husband and I share one. So we have the plan. I think we get 12 credits a year. It's our yearly anniversary present to each other. So that's always kind of funny because it, our membership renews every year around this time. So we have 12 fresh, shiny new credits just waiting for us to choose new books. But also Audible now sends out a daily email with a daily deal. And you can usually get an audiobook for under $5.00 anywhere from 2.95 to 5.95 and there have been some there have been some treasures in there i recently last week there was a philippa gregory novel and i always enjoy philippa gregory i love that sort of historical fiction based on you know events that really happened and i just find her she she brings it to life really enjoyable to listen to so that's philippa gregory so Jeffrey Archer, that's probably one of the first Jeffrey Archers I've listened to in a really long time. I can't remember the last one I listened to, but again, I think that was another daily deal that we got maybe even a year ago, and I just hadn't listened to it yet. So uh, what else? So Philip Gregory, there was also... I can't remember the name of... The one before that. Anyway. Great site to browse. I know also a lot of times you can get audiobooks through your local library. If you have the OverDrive software, you can you can take out and uh, borrow audiobooks from your local library, which is pretty cool. I think... Yes, I am. This is the row where I need to do this. So I almost went one too far. That's okay. It's looking like a horn. Put my bird feeder back up, beginning of October. My sparrows are back and back in spades. The hedge is absolutely alive, just, just alive with sparrows. I think I counted 30 sparrows the other day on my front porch. 30. I'm not even joking on my front porch. Now, keep in mind, I do not mind the mess because they do make a mess. I could sweep it off every day and every day it would still be a mess. And I don't care one bit. I love those birds so much. 
So this year we have the sparrows and then we have a pair of very noisy, aggressive, naughty blue jays. Uh, but they're so beautiful and I just, I can't resist. So I don't chase them away, but they come in and they, they, they scare all the other birds away. They eat their fill. They make a giant mess because they sort of, they scoop in the, in and around the feeder with their beaks and they flip the seed out onto the, to the porch. They just make a huge mess. It's really quite funny. Uh, and so what else do we have? We've got the blue jays, sparrows. We have four or five cardinals. We've had cardinals ever since we moved in and they're just, they're so beautiful. Which reminds me that tis the season piece. I kitted that up. See where my mind goes? Talking about birds. I'm thinking about cross stitch. I kitted up tis the season way back. I'm going to say two or three years before thread and I closed. And I have the version that came in the original Christmas book from Blackbird Designs. And I actually, I think I kitted it up with Vicki Clayton silk. So that really was a long time ago, actually. So I should get on that, right? We'll see. We'll add it to the list. So we have cardinals, probably four or five cardinals, uh, chickadees, a few juncos, which are the sweetest little bird. I mean, they are really, really sweet. They prefer to hop around on the ground and they, they sort of pick up the seeds that land on the ground. And now, just new this year, and I've never seen them at our feeder before, we have a pair of nut hatches. And they are really, really sweet little birds. They kind of flit in, grab a seed, and then beat a hasty retreat. They don't stick around. So we have a whole flock this year at the feeder. And actually, it's funny because I'm sitting here. I'm upstairs in my bedroom stitching, and I can hear all of the birds outside in the hedge. They are hilarious because you'll open the door and you'll hear the whole hedge is just buzzing, vibrating, and they're, they're quite noisy out there. And then as soon as you start to walk close to the hedge, they all immediately clam up and they stop singing, but they don't move. And then as soon as you walk away again, they start up again. It's quite funny. All right, so that's the end of that length. Now, because that horn is almost finished, I'm gonna go ahead, it's only, it's really, what is it? Nine more stitches to finish the horn. So let's grab a few more lengths here. Go. Boy, that's a nice thread. Isn't it pretty? It's such a pretty color. I am really pleased that I ordered that set. I think the eyes of my needles are getting smaller. Couldn't possibly that my eyes are getting older. A little more beeswax. These little tins. Don't little tins and little things make you happy? I like the sound they make. I like the little snapping closed of the lid. I like my lip balm in those things as well as my hand lotion bars. Those little tins are quite nice. All right, here we go. Last nine stitches. And then the horn is finished.
This is a 32 count natural linen. So it's a little bit slubby, a little bit uneven in places, but that doesn't bother me. Sometimes people have asked how to handle a slub when you come across it. That's that little um, blob of excess material, flotsam and jetsam, as it were, in your material. And I just treat it as part of the fabric and you either can stitch through it if that's where the hole would be, or you can, you know, find the hole that's right next to it. Uh, the trick is to not pick at it. Don't try to pull it out. I just treat it like it's part of the fabric as you can create a hole in your fabric if you are too aggressive with trying to get rid of the slub. Sometimes I've been able to remove one if it's very, very loose and it's clearly uh, just sort of a little bit of excess there. But generally, I find it safest for myself to not worry at it and just leave it alone. This one doesn't tend to have a lot of slubs. It's mostly just thick and thin threads. Not sure, maybe you can see up in here, there's quite some, some quite thin ones. Doesn't bother me though. I don't mind that at all. I like the natural look. Almost done. The horn and then I don't think there's anything else in that area. It's just the horn. This is the far left side of the design. So above this is the, what the heck is that? I don't know, I'm looking at, what is that? Is that a candy? Or is it the, is this a ball? I don't know, what is that supposed to be? That's weird. Well, maybe we'll call it a peppermint candy. It is, yeah, it's red and white. So I guess it's a peppermint candy. Hmm. Falling out of Santa's sack? I don't know. Or a, like a, a ball, a ball to play with? Who knows? There we go. There's the horn finished. Oh, that's cute. I had to laugh when I was editing last week's video because I hadn't really noticed until I exported the video and went to put it all together that my hand looked like the hand of a giant in the middle of the video screen for the entire video. That was a little embarrassing. But anyway, I think today, I think today is a little bit better. I tried to get it. I tried to get it from the other angle. So hopefully now that I've said that, of course, I haven't really been watching what I'm doing. So hopefully, at least it's not in the middle of the screen like it was last week. At least it's off to the side. We'll go with that. Now, these are... One, two, three, four, five. Two... I finish up Santa's sack here. Santa's toy bag. Bag of goodies. Three, four, five. So we do celebrate Christmas with our family. Um, and we, for the adults, we don't exchange gifts with everyone. A few years back, 
we decided as a family that we would pick names instead for the adults. We all buy presents for the children, of which there are three. There's Clara and my two kids, Sarah and Nicholas. So the kids are receive presents from everyone, but the adults, instead of buying presents for everyone, we we draw names. So, um, and and we put a dollar value limit on the gift. So, um, my father, my father has my name this year, and I think problem is that the weekend that we pulled names was the weekend that I was really really sick and we'd gone out to breakfast and I had I had one of those head colds where you just want to go back to bed and never leave the house ever and I don't remember whose name I pulled it's so terrible so I'm hoping that Kathy remembers all of the names that we pulled and so whoever I have pulled this year I will be responsible for their gift and it's a nice way to do it because, you know, as adults, there really aren't a lot of things usually that we, you know, need as far as sometimes it can feel a bit difficult to try and think for presents for that many people and it's expensive and it it should just be about, you know, being together and, and celebrating family instead of going into debt, frankly. So uh, it's a really nice tradition that we started many years ago now. And I you always look forward to that special gift that you're going to receive from whoever pulled your name because it means that, you know, you had a little bit more time to think about that person and what they'd like and think of something special because you don't have to buy for a huge list of people. All right, now where am I going here? Up one. Less. Okay, so one less and then two more over there. All right, so uh, there probably won't be a video on Monday. There probably won't be a Monday floss tube because my husband is away and I am in the middle of secret holiday Evertote preparations and I need all of the time that I have over the next couple of weeks to prepare for that. And also I still have to do my regular teaching and uh, kid wrangling with my own two littles. And well, Sarah's, I still, I still think of her as a little, even though she's practically a grown up. the moment but they're still my kids they still need their they still need their mom so next week I am going to forego Monday floss tube I also um I'm I'm doing a bit of secret stitching at the moment I know and I can't share it with you just yet so the other than this, what you're seeing today, the only other stitching I've been doing is secret stitching and I can't really share it with you. So I will be back. I'll do a video next Friday for Friday off the grid because I enjoy this. I often think, what am I going to talk about when I sit down? And then before I know it, um, let me see. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 37 minutes. 37 minutes have passed and we've just been chit chatting about, you know, life stuff, important stitchy stuff.
and it's it's really it's just I, I'm gonna be a bit selfish it's nice for me to sit down and take that time to record these videos I really enjoy it so even if nobody watched it I'd probably still do it but I do appreciate you visiting with me and leaving me such great comments and feedback speaking of feedback uh, last Monday's video, the funny little vlog, uh, episode that I did, I showed, a, I showed how I make the progress keepers or zipper pulls with the little charms. And I did not know the names of the tools that I was using because, well, I'm not a beater or a jewelry maker. And I just bought what Adrian told me to buy. And I don't know what they were called. They're just called pliers. So two people very kindly wrote me and said, they're not called crimpers. That's something different. They are called, just called pliers. And I know what pliers look like. My husband has pliers. That's all they are. They're just small pliers. So one of them is the round nose plier and the other one was a straight nose plier. S simple as that. So there you go. In case you were sitting on the edge of your seat wondering what those were called. Those little progress keepers are fun to make. And I love all the little different charms you can get. They're fun. All right, just a few more stitches here. I don't think I have to play thread chicken. This time, we're almost there. Okay, if I can get to the other side. Haha, uh -huh, get it? A chicken getting to the other side. Made a little joke there and I didn't even know it. Three more. Oh, lots of thread. I could probably do a whole more row. Just kidding. That really would be thread chicken. And I think I'd lose. All right, Santa's sack is, Santa's toy sack is almost done. Go. One more. And look at that. Huh, not too shabby. And I have thread stuck to my arm. Do you ever do that? Do you ever wander around the house or go out to grocery shop or something and you look down and there's thread on your clothing? <laughs> it happens to me a surprisingly large amount of times. So anyway, I'll make sure that my clothing is clean before I leave the house today. That's silly. All right, so flip it back to the front. I did not get to my coat. So let's just finish off a few stitches here just so that I can say I did. Oh, you know what? I can feel that gold thread in the back. I'm gonna move that. Let's move that to the front here. All right, we'll make it over to the cuff and then we'll call it a day. What time is it? It is now 1.30. 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday afternoon. And I'm going to go put in a few, more than a few. I am going to work right up until 6 o'clock sewing, 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 sewing. I have a few other orders to get out today. Lovely bags going in the mail. And then at 6 p.m., I am going to make the biggest cup of coffee. And I'm going to sit down with this and my secret stitching. And maybe my knitting. I've got socks to knit. And... I am going to take the night off 
you know what? I can't just leave this. I just can't do it. Let's see. Are we going all the way across? Yes. Goes all the way across. Back to the bag. So, hopefully you weren't sick of me yet. Because I can't, I can't just leave this thread. I have to stitch it. To go all the way over. And I'm, I mean, I'm practically done anyways, right? How long could it possibly take? I didn't set my timer. If my timer was going off, you know, I'd have to listen, do what the timer was telling me to do. But I'd probably, just like hitting the snooze button, I'd probably ignore it at the moment just to finish these stitches across this one row, just this one row. It's like knitting. Just one more row, and then I'll go to bed. Just one more stitch. I feel like there was something else I had to remember to talk about today. And I just can't remember. I've been sporadically checking Instagram. I, I love Instagram. And so I feel a little out of the loop because I haven't been able to spend very much time over there lately. And I have been, I, I've mentioned before that I met the Bee Sisters last year, Olivia and Elena. And Elena has a bakery in San Francisco. She and her father own a bakery and the things that she bakes look amazing. And I've tasted her baking. We we did stop in and she she um she treated us to breakfast and her, the the things that they make there are spectacular. And so she's been posting photographs of her her creations and their their Halloween creations and they are amazing. They're so creative and fun. And then her sister, so Olivia, has been putting she's been doing uh daily vlog updates for Darktober stitching and she I haven't watched her second one, but I watched her first video that she put up that covered I think the first first week, first 10 days of October, and she recorded a little video every day, and she started something new every single day, um, and these were all Halloween uh, starts, and it was, it was really fun, and it made me want to go through my stash and do the same thing at Christmas time. Let that sink in, people. What do you think? Do you think that I'm crazy? Starting something new every day in the month of December? I kind of think it's a bit of genius. I probably have enough. I probably have enough stash. Like little ones, right? Little, little winter Christmas patterns, little trees, little ornaments, ornaments from the Just Cross Stitch magazines. What do you think? I'm thinking that that sounds awfully good. Hmm. I think I'm off to make plans. All right. I am not quite done this thread, but I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to leave it. I know. I know. I'm going to leave it there. Just kidding. Do they have you going there? I can't just leave it there. I have to finish it. There's only a few more. This is where the armhole is. So we need four, three, and two. Four stitches, three stitches, and two stitches going up to the toy bag. So I think I'm going to finish those and then I will be out of floss. So 
a, a new start every day in the month of December. That's crazy. That That is crazy, right? <laughs> right? I wouldn't even have to buy anything. I'm just thinking about what's already in my stash. I have those hands-on design Christmas ornaments. You know, the 12 days of Christmas. I have them in my stash. I, ha I even have the fabric. I have the... I know that they were... <sighs> I think I've had them for a year and a half, two years, whenever they first came out. And I haven't even started them. They were charted for red fabric, but I bought uh, the picture of this plus the gingerbread, even weave gingerbread fabric. It's perfect. You know, I could start, I could start those. I could start, I've got a few Little House Needleworks. I've got my big, remember last year I did that episode on Miss Patty's Giant Pillow? I still haven't started my Giant Pillow. My wheels are turning. And I know, frankly, that I'm making some of you sweat a little bit because you can't stand the thought of having so many projects on the go. But uh, for me, this is, this is such a big part of the enjoyment is the planning and the choosing of the colors and the threads and the fabrics. And I start to get a little excited. If you couldn't tell, I'm totally excited. And now I want to start all the things. So now I'm going to plan. So let me know what you think. Crazy or genius? Crazy or genius? I know which way I'm leaning towards. And it's not crazy. Okay. Cut this off and look at that. I, how, I just couldn't leave it. Would you? And now I feel like I accomplished something and I can let it sit here until 6 p.m. tonight where it will wait for me to come back. All right, that is it for me. I have to go get back to my sewing. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I can't wait to see what everybody is up to tonight on the Facebook group. I just find it the best possible use of my time on Facebook. Everybody is kind and happy and it's just fun. I love seeing all of your stitching. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for the chat and I hope you have a great weekend. I will see you next Friday and I'll see you on Facebook. Happy stitching.